we read in your memoir, which we'll get onto in a second, yes. that you haven't actually rewatched any of the Harry Potter films. Why? Uh, this is, is semi-true. They have been on over Christmases, and when my friends ever see them and I'm in the room, they quickly flick it over to, to take the mickey out of a younger younger Tom. But uh, I haven't rewatched them in their entirety in the sort of marathon-esque way that I look forward to, um, and I hope to do it. I just I, I want to save the, that moment for when I'm slightly older and possibly with muggles of my own uh, at my at my feet. So it's, it's not a case of indifference, I'm just saving them for a uh, special occasion. Yeah, That's I like cool. it. <laughs> uh, now, Tom, you're here to talk to us about your new book. Yes. It's called uh, Beyond the Wand. Yes. Um, there's a lot of talk about your co-stars from Harry Potter in the book, mm. as you know, as we can imagine. But um, Jason Isaacs, <laughs> he's, he's one of the people you kind of like, one of your favourites, should we say. You hold him quite high. Why, why him in particular? Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, Jason, he plays my father in the Potter films. Um, he, he came in on the Chamber of Secrets and he was immediately a... I still call him Dad, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> He came on as a father figure um, on screen and off, but he always looked after me and gave me great examples of, of someone that is a working actor with a family um, that manages to balance the both. Mm. Um, and, and he's always been... I say a father figure, he's always been also like a bit of a best friend. He's, he's offered advice, he's never told yeah. me to do things, and, uh, and luckily now we're, we're, we're more best friends than father and son, but he's always been a... a Great person to have around fighting in your corner. Yeah, he's brilliant. a super nice guy, he isn't is, he? He's yeah. been on here a few times. Um, you also talk about a gaffe you made with Alan Rickman. Mm. I love Alan Rickman. Um, Rickman plays Professor Snape yes. in the Harry Potter films. Now, you stood on his cloak. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oh. what happened? How did Alan react? Not great. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he gave us a very clear warning before <laughs> the uh, scene. It, this was him walking along and us and me and fellow other uh, actors trying to follow him as closely as possible. And his cloak draped a bit like a wedding gown. Um, yeah. And he said in no uncertain terms, don't step on my cloak. It's very oh. hard if something's voluminous. It, it, thank you. <laughs> I wish I'd come up with that response. <laughs> yes. uh, that would have but... been like a red flag to a bull to me when I was a kid. I'd have been like, I'm stepping on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, maybe part of me was, 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 was that minded, but I was very, very desperately trying not to step on his cloak, which I did, of course, on the first take. And uh, little people don't realise that the cloak is, is attached to his <gasps> neck. So I nearly killed, oh, killed the poor man, really. Uh, so it wasn't just a joke. Um, luckily, someone else stepped on his cloak the next take. OK. So the heat was yeah. immediately... Drifted uh, a little bit. Ushered on Great. Great. That's what I like to it. Um, now, let's talk about Emma Watson. Yes. Because, of course, very, very close friend mm. now. In fact, you call her a soulmate. Um, but it wasn't always like that because you got off to a bit of a... Rocky start, didn't you, you two? <laughs> Slightly. It was less about our personalities, more the fact that um, I, was a, I was a bit of a um, cocky 12-year-old when we first auditioned, and Emma was very new to it as a nine-year-old. Um, I think I was slightly belittling somewhere in the process of, of meeting her uh, in the audition period, which I think subsequently helped probably me get the part of yeah. uh, Draco. It was quite in character. Method acting, some would... Mm. Uh, <laughs> Some would say, but no, I've got nothing but love for Emma and she's actually a huge encouragement for me to write the book in the first place. Um, I wrote down lots of lots of stories about all the highs and lows of, of making the Potter films, mm. but she was very encouraging to actually also talk about my personal life, my family life, pre, post Potter, all the, uh, mm. the highs and lows. So uh, yeah. I've got a lot to thank her for, for sure. Uh, and on that, Tom, you just kind of like touched on it there, but it's World Mental Health Day today mm. and, you know, we want people to be open and, and talk frankly as well. And you talk about your own struggles as mm. an adult and suffering with mental health. Um, what, what was kind of like the triggers for you? What, what kind of got you to that place in your life? It's difficult to say, really. Mental health issues, they rear their head in uncertain mm. and often unfounded territory, really. Um, yeah. And I think some of the problem with it is often to try to find the cause or yeah. the reason, whereas a lot of times, certainly in my case, there is a, a pre-genetic disposition. Um, I've found that the best way that I've really sort of moved forward with it is to, is to sort of accept that this is part of life, um, same as physical ailments, and, and talking about it to me has been the ultimate um, uh, gift, really. Mm. That, my dog 
walking her, jumping in the ocean and, and playing music, making music and, and performing. To me, those are the, the biggest things that sort of Amazing. quiet the mind. But I'm, I'm very excited to be someone to help advocate. Uh, talking about it to someone is always yeah. the first, first step. Yeah. Or, or Susie actually wrote in and asked what names three simple things that make you happy. And you just did it. So perfect. Boom. I yeah. got <laughs> one step ahead of the kids. Susie's <laughs> happy. Yeah. <laughs>